you've probably wanted to make a layout like this one. And before getting started, you assumed it wouldn't be very hard to do because you've seen things like this all over the place. But then you spent way too much time trying to figure out even what to look up because what do you call a layout like this? Only to eventually find out that it's actually a lot harder than you figured it would be in the first place. And you ended up using some third party JS solution to actually get it done. But my friend and friends, I have good news because this might be getting a lot easier. Uh, there is an issue though, which is that there's a disagreement over what the CSS should look like to actually create a layout like that. So the WebKit team has actually put together this page right here to help explain what the problem even is in the first place, uh, but then give some of the different options that are being thought of right now and also ask us for our opinions. So I wanna go through this a little bit uh, and talk about it. And so you can see it's help us invent CSS grid level three, AKA the masonry layout, which I'm, I'm so excited for. I'm actually, I made a video on using masonry I don't even know how it was like three years ago, maybe longer. Um, and then it just never happened. <laughs> so a little bit disappointing, but we're going to dive into what it is uh, today. Um, and importantly, this before we get into it, you can see it does say we're inventing the CSS grid level three because this was part or is still part of the grid spec, but there is some talk of potentially breaking it off. So uh, I believe that will come up in this article. Um, so Jen Simmons authored this. So thank you, Jen, for putting the time in because this is a very, uh, the demos and everything here we're gonna see, it's, it's a really good article. So what is masonry layout? It's this layout right here. First issue, <laughs> what do we mean by masonry? Because um, the idea here is it's like bricks that are sorted together. It's kind of funny because on my Discord community, people have sort of questioned why it's masonry because they're different sizes. Uh, but I think it goes back to like the idea of stones and everything else. It's not just like a brick in a house or whatever where bricks are all the same size. Um, you know, if you're doing masonry work, you might be working with things of different sizes and they all sort of slot into each other. Uh, there's also here, it says that it's also frequently called the, the waterfall layout because it's a sort of flowing down the page, I guess. I'm curious, leave a comment what you would call uh, this. And we're gonna come back to the naming actually uh, in a little bit. Um, but this is really important is these two points. This layout is popular because it solves a few problems that other layouts do not. It allows for content of different aspect ratios and avoids the need to crop or truncate content, which is important. Also, it distributes content across the page instead of flowing down each column one by one. Because you can create a layout like this right now using CSS columns, but the first bit of content in your HTML will be here, and then it's gonna go flow down this way. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, and then it comes back up and it's doing this type of thing, which a lot of times people don't want. They want it to go across the top and then go to the next one and sort of just you know flow the way our content normally flows and what we're used to. So it solves that problem right there. Uh, and it lets the web site lazy load additional content at the bottom without moving existing content around. Of course, that's also really cool um, and important. This layout creates uniformly sized columns without any rows. And this is kind of interesting how it does that because it, it's basically using CSS grid to make our columns without any rows. Um, but it's possible that for this right now, people are using JavaScript, which 100% people are using JavaScript <laughs> to do these types of things right now because there's no easy way to do it with CSS. This is where some of the questions come up. There's questions being asked about how CSS should handle a masonry style layout. Some people remain skeptical that this capability should be part of CSS grid and want it instead to be its own separate display type. It's an interesting idea. I have thoughts on it, we'll get to those. <laughs> Others are questioning whether or not this kind of layout is needed on the web at all. They aren't sure that well-known websites will use it. This I know people will use it. This is one of those things on my Discord that is one of the most frequently asked things that I see. Like there's always tons of questions and this one just keeps coming back over and over and over again. People want to make layouts like this. So should it be a thing? Yes, it should be. If we have to use third party JavaScript things to be able to do something that should be, it's layout related, that seems silly to me and it should be part of CSS. And we wouldn't have third party JavaScript to be able to do it if people didn't want to do it, right? So yes, we should definitely have it. I guarantee you it will be used. Um, and I don't get this part where it says, aren't sure that well-known websites will use it. I don't know why well-known matters here but whatever. Um, with such fundamental disagreements at play, no browser can ship. We must first come to a consensus in the CSS working group. This is great. And this is really good to see this, 
that they want to come to consensus before getting any further into things. And this is where there was like a page, right, of uh, the mistakes that were made in CSS. The people that are part of the CSS working group don't want to add any more things to that page, right? So these days, there's a lot of thought and why articles like this get written. There's big discussions that go on it. And when there's disagreement on, you know, it's a lot of people that are involved in the CSS working group. And when there's disagreement between how things should go and the naming of things and everything else, these days they often reach out to the public as well, which is what they're doing here in this article, to get our opinion on what we think, just to have more voices heard so we can see if we can get to a consensus on things. They did this most recently that I can remember with the nesting um, syntax as well. Um, so yeah, here, they want real world web designers and developers to weigh in on the discussion to, and express what you want. And our input can make a difference and I guarantee you it will. So um, yeah, do we want a display grid with a way of creating masonry or do we want a display masonry instead? Right now, the way it would work, you would do a display grid, you put your grid template columns, just whatever you want, create your columns the way you would create columns with grid. Um, and this is where the magic would happen grid template rows masonry. And I'm not gonna highlight it because it's making it harder to read. We'll highlight all the other ones to sort of focus on that one. That's all you'd have to do. And you would have your columns and then this would happen to your images. They would just all start fitting into however they would need to be able to fit in. Because it is currently using grid, we can leverage grid's full power to define the columns. So you don't need to do even equal columns. You can have columns of different sizes, which is really cool. Uh, so here's an example where the two columns on the end, I believe, are locked into place. And then the other ones in the middle are just using the FR, so they become like squishy. And so here you can see that as it's going, um, it's shrinking down. They must be using a min-max here, uh, that, you know, the min-max repeat syntax um, to be able to get that to happen. And the two ones on the side are just locked into place. It is causing things to reshuffle because it's fitting them into place. And that's important as well because, you know, as it's changing size and as the amount of columns you have is going to change, things might have to shuffle around to be able to create the proper masonry. And that's like a real masonry layout. You're fitting the rocks together wherever they go to eventually, you know, have it work, right? Um, so here, let's see. Yeah, they're using the repeat with the autofill. That's what I meant when I said the repeat syntax <laughs> with the min max. Um, I won't go through all of this. I'd encourage giving it a deeper read. It's just talking here about sort of how we can take advantage of grid as much as possible with how we can create columns to create really dynamic things. Again, do whatever you want for your column sizes basically, and it will work. So it's really handy. Um, the other thing here, this is cool. You can leverage grid's ability to span columns. So you can just add like a span on something and it would span two columns and it would still work, which is, <laughs> which is awesome. And then we also experimented with combining masonry waterfall with view transit. Ooh. Let's see, let's see this one, view transitions in, in play too. So they're gonna click on an image, that's so cool. <laughs> and it's sort of just all, it's making that one always be the first one and probably have some sort of span or size on it just to make it bigger. Um, and then the view transitions actually get everything to just resort themselves automatically. View transitions are amazing, I love it. Um, super cool. Oh, using subgrid and explicit placements. This is cool. So you could use, so, okay, I mean, subgrid, they're setting up a grid, a parent grid here that has two columns on it. This is spanning two columns, but then it's locking in the price or whatever this is into that column or not the price, the ISBN, whatever it is, the number of the painting. So we get that locked into place because it's always in the second column. This description, uh, you know, oil on canvas, whatever is always here. Um, so that content's getting split and you can still do that. That's really cool. I love that. Okay, so now the fun part, the debate. <laughs> let's start, let's get into the debate that's been blocking the working group from moving forward. Our hope is that web designers and developers chime in, write blog posts, post on social media, make YouTube videos, with your thoughts about what direction we should take. Some people, including those at Apple, believe that it should be part of Grid, which you do, like this is written by Jen who's working at Apple. So like <laughs> this article, as you read through it and I'm skipping through a lot of it, it's clearly written in an opinionated way. So do take that, like as you go through it, realize that the person who's authoring it is opinionated about it, but that's fine. They're sharing their opinion. They're letting you know that they're opinionated about it. So as long as they're uh, being, you know, uh, transparent about that, then it's all good. Um, 
So some people think that masonry should instead be its own display type, defining masonry, so just a display masonry instead, which in a way I understand because, you know, just you have a grid and then if you need that type of layout, you do a display masonry. So I can see why. One of my hesitations here before even getting into any other opinions about it are just like, <laughs> we already have these and then like the masonry, I'm guessing is gonna work so much like grid anyway. I always think of it in terms of like teaching a beginner <laughs> and like, okay, we're learning grid. Now you wanna make this other layout that's gonna use columns the same way, but instead of doing a display grid, you're gonna do a display something else. That always just to me feels a little weird, but um, whatever, display masonry columns, you say the size, not complicated. That just, we have the multi columns now in CSS. You can just do something like that already. But again, the content would flow differently. So just changing display masonry, say what your columns are, that makes sense. Um, perhaps the same, so repeat, yeah, that would make sense, min max, where only one repeating width is allowed. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know, with significant limitations, where only one repeating width would be allowed. I'm, I guess I'm curious why we wouldn't be able to use, like we have the grid stuff. So if you just did masonry columns, let's say like that, why you wouldn't be able to do whatever we can do with our grid columns right now. Um, the other thing, if, if we did go down this route, just because we've already established the grid template columns syntax, I would call this masonry template columns. Because to me, if we if this is the direction it ends up going, to have grid template columns and then masonry columns, that's going to drive people insane. <laughs> like, why not just call it grid columns then? Why is it template columns? But then in the masonry, it's not template. Um, because we're still setting up the template that the stuff is going to be placed on. So I would keep the syntax as similar as possible, even if it does end up being two things. That's the first thought that comes into my mind when I see masonry columns like that. Keep going here. Making masonry a simple separate layout type would avoid the work necessary to keep grid and masonry working together in combination, both now and in the long term. Doing this would simplify the layout model, making it easier for browsers to implement, reduce the potential for performance traps, and allow the feature set of grid and masonry to diverge. That makes sense. That's a good argument. Um, Conversely, we believe the effort needed to add this capability to CSS Grid is worth the many benefits to be had. The spec has already been written. It's existed as, a, what did we say before, 2020 is when it was written. Uh, it's in two browser engines, Firefox and in uh, WebKit. And while making CSS Grid more complex will mean it's harder to extend in the future, we believe there's an advantage to having these two types of grid layouts intertwined. This way, the CSS Working Group will always define new additions, both modular and columnar grids. I can't read that word, but that's okay. There won't be something added to display grid that will be left out of the display masonry or vice versa. For example, many developers want CSS Grid Level 4 to provide a mechanism for styling grid areas and grid lines. Yes, that would be so cool. <laughs> we have, if, if you have ever used columns, you can actually like style the gap. You can put like a line down in between the gap. That would be great to have that in grid. <laughs> and so the, the idea here is if they added that feature to grid, if the grid and the masonry were two different specs or two different things, <clears throat> that would mean adding it to grid wouldn't necessarily mean it would come to the masonry because that's something different. Now they probably end up having to add it to both, but that's kind of annoying, right? You're, you're doing, having to repeat yourself in a sense there, or the browser engineers would to be able to implement that in both. Cause you'd expect if you could do it in a grid, you could do it in a masonry. Whereas if masonry is part of grid, then you only have to do it once. Another argument made by advocates of display masonry is that masonry is conceptually a fundamental different layout type from CSS grid and therefore should have its own display type. They often describe grid inherently being about lining things up in two dimensions. And since masonry only lines things up in one dimension, it's not a grid. In fact, some have advocated that masonry is more like Flexbox. Yeah, so that's true. Um, I think that's getting hung up on the word grid though. <laughs> in a sense. Hmm. My issue there is I don't find, to me, maybe it's just, that's not my mental model of when I use grid. I, I get that we're doing that, right? We're, we're creating a grid. But the benefit of grid, in my opinion, the way I always tell people, how do you pick between Flexbox and how do you pick between grid? It's about 
the control that you're getting right away. So for me, Grid, it's the parent is creating the layout and the children will live within that layout. Flexbox, the children have a lot of control over what the layout is going to be. Um, it's Flexbox is inside out, Grid is outside in. Now, that saying that out loud makes me think I get sort of what they're saying there because in a sense, we're still getting that idea of Grid setting things up only in one direction now. We're not doing it in two. We're setting up our columns so the parent is controlling the columns, the children are controlling the rows. Rows, we'll call it, right? They're not really rows because each row is now independent or there are no rows or whatever, however you want to visualize it. My mental model of how I work, I don't often end up declaring rows. There are times where it's great. I love CSS Grid and there's definitely times where I want to declare rows, but there's so many times where I just let the rows do their own thing. I'm just, you know, because we're so used to to content flowing down the page. And it's layouts left to right where we want stuff to happen. And then occasionally, yeah, you are. But so many layouts I'm doing, I don't define my rows. So I'm okay without that having that control anyway, in a sense. Um, and it works with my own mental model of how I work with Grid. All right, so what we wanna hear from you, this is the important part, comment at the CSS Working Group on the issue. So if you have any strong thoughts on here, I would encourage you to do this. Um, and I don't want you to echo what I'm saying either. I almost feel like ending the video here, I've already given some opinions. I don't want a whole bunch of people going in there and commenting what I'm saying in this video. It's really, really important because you might disagree with some of the stuff I'm saying, or you maybe you don't have a developed idea. But if you have a strong opinion about this, definitely go and comment uh, at the CSS Working Group on the issue to continue the conversation. And don't just go and comment, read the discussion before you comment, because some people might have already brought up what you're thinking, and it's a discussion. It's not just throw posts in there without looking what else is going in. That's very important. Um, but here's the things they wanna know. Should masonry or waterfall be a part of the grid? My opinion, definitely. Do you want the capabilities to define a columnar grid within C? Do you want the masonry layout as part of CSS grid? So you get subgrid, spanning, placement, track sizing, all the stuff we have currently with grid. You want to just be able to have display grid and then do rows masonry or whatever and then have that work or should it be a display masonry? Will you use it? What might you create with it? This is always a good thing. And especially now that we have it in Firefox or Grid, if you're gonna leave a comment, it's awesome to give examples of something you might build with it. Um, and I have a live thing on my website where I'm using it, so I can link to that. Um, there you go, link to your ideas, share your use cases, etc. Are there things that you want to do that you can't do with this model? So if you are trying to play with it or you have ideas and you think this should be possible and you try doing it and it's not working or whatever it is, or you know, go, well, this would make sense. Why can't I do this? That's a very good thing to be able to raise in the, the working group. Often thinking about something theoretically and actually seeing it in use can be very different. To make sure the CSS working group gets the design of the feature correct, we need developers to gain some hands-on experience. Yeah, so definitely use it. And I've, I've used it a long time ago. I'm gonna play around with it more before I leave my comment. And I'll probably make a few demos and stuff um, to make sure I get everything. And this is a really important part too, even though it's only in the PS. Um, but it's likely masonry is not the best name for this new value. CSS names are usually simple in words that describe the result. So they give some examples of that um, there. And the problem with masonry is it's more of a metaphor. It's not super straightforward. It has to be explained with a backstory. Uh, such a term is hard to remember, remember for developers who don't speak English. I know English speakers who don't fully get it either. Um, so should it be grid template rose waterfall instead, since that's the dominant word used for this layout in certain regions? I never heard it called the waterfall before, um, so I don't know if it's better. As I said off the top, one of the issues with this layout is when you first go to create it and you want to Google it, you don't know what to look up because you're just like, uh, uh, and then people call it like the Pinterest layout. They're not going to do that in the spec. They're not going to call it, you know, grid template rose Pinterest. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Even here, it's not just about layouts used by Pinterests. <laughs> um, it, the idea of using it is to create the browser, please create a grid, but without any rows. So because of that, maybe grid template rows, none would be the best. That's interesting um, because we don't want any rows, but we can't do that because that it's already taken. Um, grid template rows off. Grid template rows off. Hmm. That feels so weird. I don't know why, but grid template rows off. I get it. That's an interesting one. 
do we want the problem I have there is I understand that we're talking about a grid that won't have any rows in how it's rendering the page, but it just, that feels weird. Grid template rows off. I'm trying to think if like you're teaching this to somebody and that, I mean, I'm biased in that sense that I'm always thinking about how I would want to do something with a beginner, which is why one of the reasons I think that it makes sense being part of grid is if you already understand how grid works, like let's learn grid and then, or this is just CSS in general. I love being able to teach something and as a learner, being able to see people do this for me is really big where people are doing something and then you just add this one little thing and that's, oh, now it's gotten cooler. And now I can add this one other little thing and oh, that just got cooler too. Uh, so, you know, whatever it is, even doing grid template uh, columns and then you do three columns and you have to write them all out and then you use the repeat syntax to get them there. And it's like, oh, that's a nice little like level up, right? And CSS is a great language for slowly leveling up and just add like sprinkling in an extra layer uh, that you don't need to learn, right? You can do stuff already, but then you get that one extra little thing and now you can do that. And then you get that level up slowly. I love it. I, it's one of the greatest things with it. And so for me, if you go and you learn all this grid stuff and then it's a display masonry or whatever we're going to call it, and then it's a masonry template columns, even though it works exactly the same, there's just like this extra thing that we're adding on and having to learn that's not beneficial <laughs> in my own opinion. I don't see the benefit of doing that. Whereas doing something like this, you've learned grid, you've learned how the columns work, and then you can just like toggle the rows on and off. That seems like something that makes sense to me. Now, what I don't know is if I like grid template rows off. Grid template rows, it, it's an interesting one, but if I'm teaching that to someone, it's like, okay, now we can just turn off our rows. That does sort of make sense. I'm a little bit thrown off on that one. I'm not sure what I would actually, I don't have a strong opinion there yet. <laughs> I sort of like the masonry because it was just in my head is that's what we're going to call it. So sometimes when something's different, uh, you have to think about it a bit. So I'm, I'm going to give that one some thought. I don't know what I think about that one, but I definitely think it should be part of grid or let's go in order. It should happen hundred percent. The amount of times I see this being asked for hundred percent, there should be a way of doing it. I also think that it should be part of grid because grid's awesome. And if we can just take all of the stuff we can do with grid and add this one thing I get from the browser perspective, it's a lot more work and that sucks for them. But from a developer experience point of view, just being able to add one line or one value, change a value, and it just goes to the behavior I'm expecting it to instead of having to do a bunch of other stuff instead, that to me makes a lot of sense. So that's where I'm sitting on it. Um, I'm gonna give it some thought, I'm gonna comment on there, I'm gonna build some demos and play around with it a little bit. And I would encourage you to do the same thing as well if you have the time and the want to do so. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Tim, Simon, Andrew, and Philip, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.